The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could begin today's discourse, it is imperative to the fact that each and every believer has to make sure that he has been controlled of the Spirit by using Rebound 1 John 1 and in the privacy of his priesthood so that the things that we are dealing with, the true God, demands the true divine nature to be inculcated in us, to be imparted in us, to the praise of His glory and His grace, which constantly causes us to know the reality of the Word, to be the true divine nature, rather than compromising with the cheap, morally refined, old sin, human nature in our past. And every time whenever we pray, we start to discuss or we have to have fellowship with that great Lord and to make thorough understanding of His true words. It is a true essential for our part that we need to use rebound because we are not dealing with the human, actual, human intellectual exercises. Neither we are dealing with the human energy to be tottered in our lives. But the only reality what we are dealing with is the reality with the true word of Lord. The true word of Lord which causes us to know, to make in all conversation of our life as a holy conversation. And our honesty in all our life to be a holy walk with pure honesty. And all these things have been given only to the believer of this unique dispensation of the church or in fact even any dispensation of the believer not been made known about this mystery doctrine which has been initiated by the Trinity. But apart from this, they have been given, even in the Old Testament, the surety of God. In comparison to the Old Testament, we can tell they were having endowment. But we, the believers, are having enablement and the enlightening ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which have to be taken care of to the point of realization that we need to be constantly filled with the Spirit at each and every breath of our life. In fact, even each and every millisecond of our life, we have been called to partake that holiness of Jehovah. We are not being called for any other methods, any other trends, any other procedures. And to partake that divine essence, it requires Ephesians 4.24, which tells us the one who has been created in the image of God have to be made known through righteousness and thesalithia, which is nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And in order to make this work absolutely effective, or in order to make this process which we are going through in our day-to-day -day life demands the true integrity which we can get through in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. Greater our failure to know the simple truths simply means that we have been a failure to know the reality of Bible doctrine, the reality of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So in order to make sure that we are going to be controlled of the Spirit, we need to use rebound, 1 John 1, 9, in the privacy of your soul. It is not that who is the believer that could be eligible, or it is a relation only to the Roman Catholicism where the way they have been really ruled out some of the things, not according to biblically, but according to their lust patterns to control the nation. The lust patterns to control this Christendom. When Martin Luther was present, the way he was being thrown out of the Roman system, the trial, you will really come to know the change is what he wanted to get in through the biblical principle, but the way they have not listened to it, but they thought it is not worthy, and they just threw him out. Such kind of a patterns that have been practicing even today, even when you are getting the Protestantism, Hindu, including all the denominations. The Bible is subjected to only one interpretation, that's it. The denominations are a brain thought given by this, by this moron-minded people who do not know the importance of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in their lives. 
neither they are here to critically analyze the scriptures taken under the sound judgment by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather thinking this version could be best, that version could be best. But not going to the proper exegesis of the word so that they can come back and look and understand what is the true worth of their work. The only reason of their failure, if they have any modesty, if they are born to one parent, they have to tell. The modesty of their integrity of their heart should tell to them. The failure is in their reasoning not to divide the word of the Lord accurately. Not to learn the word of the Lord accurately. Not to come back to the reality of Bible action accurately. That's why, dear brethren, whenever we start our discourse, we need to make sure that we have been controlled of the Spirit by using rebound. Because spiritual things have to be compared with the spiritual spiritual realm itself the initiated one knows what is the doctrine the, uninitiate, the uninitiated one do not know what do you meant to say by mystery and when apostle paul was sending the mystery doctrine of the church age he knew what was the initiation given only to the church and this reality of the truth wherewith you and i have to go through demands rebound the first and primary responsibility laid down upon their shoulders to use rebound Without rebound, it is not possible for us. Without rebound, it is not possible to even look or even call our Lord as Lord because if it is not the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling you, you cannot even respect the word. And you cannot even have the fear of Jehovah in your hands. Far less, we can take the divine partaking nature which has been given for us, though we have been insisted in the old sin nature to, be, to come back and master over the old sin nature through the spiritual resurrection in Christ. So, dear brethren, in the privacy of your priesthood, make a prayer, and we get back and discourse the things pertaining to the uniqueness of the church age under the polytema privileges. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sorry, Lord, as we are going to study this word. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. The only reality that you and I, as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, should know is to be thoroughly oriented for spiritual submission. Without taking the spiritual submission, it is highly impossible for us to understand, to study, to pray, or even to learn the mind of Christ. Learning the mind of Christ is a day-by-day -day process. It is a day-by-day -day process wherewith you and I have to give number one priority. And so that we can orient our life to that number one priority. Lord's priority in each and every believer's life is that he has to learn up in doctrine. Lord's priority in each and every member of the human race is that they have to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First Timothy 2 for very clearly exemplifies to the point of the fact that everyone should come to the knowledge of Christ. Everyone should come to know who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. None should perish. And the great work laid down upon our shoulders is not just staying over here and enjoying the eternal life of heaven. To manifest the true ambassadorship. And in order to manifest the true ambassadorship, it demands that we have to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. Lord doesn't use the one who is unfaithful, the one who is not prepared. But Lord uses only those men who are absolutely prepared, dear brethren. And that preparation is a day-by-day -day process. When Timothy was being told to guard the doctrine, it was a great work to guard the doctrine against such kind of false teachers who have been manifestly made known in this church age. Who do not even value or count their life for the worth wherewith they have been chosen. They in fact even do not know why they are entering into this Christendom. The great work what they want to do is to make money out of the ministry. Cupidity like that King Agrippa. He was a great king to judge the case of Apostle Paul. But because of that cupidity, he lost it. But when Lord stands with a man who is, who is faithful to him like a mighty terrible one, there is no reasoning by the law, there is no reasoning by XYZ. Even the Tertullian was been shocked to know from where Apostle Paul learned that law. That is how Lord will use you, provided you are faithful enough to be learned, to be grown up. In fact, even the same thing will happen to us. We are not here to be compromised for the stupid things. We are not here to be compromised by the human nature. But rather we are here to get the one which is of a maximum glorification to Christ, the initiated mystery doctrine. The initiators are the Trinity, the royal family of God. The initiators are that you and I have been permanently indwelled by the Trinity, the invisible power. 
and this invisible power have to be made known by the spiritual phenomena itself. It cannot be made known by any other methods. You may walk by shaking your head to the ground and just go on the way so that you can learn these things. No. Only the one who have initiated it, they have to teach to you. The one who have initiated them are nothing but the Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. And this is the mystery doctrine of the church age, hidden in the past, but made made now through us, through Apostle Paul, so that the dispensations could be clearly taught, according to all the ages, according to all the privileges, according to all the things, wherewith you may think I am a compromise for Carmenian, a 5th century Greek Alec, Alec philosopher, but the Lord intends to give to you a reward like Alexandria. Which one you want? You want to go for the Alexandria or you want to go for the Parmenian? The Parmenian are the people of the Old Testament saints. He was only a philosopher who could get only a few rewards. But the grace of the Lord which is munificent upon us or which is can amount to the grace which has been given to Parmenian through the reward of Alexandria, how much great more we have to give to our life. This great reward is the positive of privileges. And this is right now, not we shall belong, but we belong right now. The work that has been given to us belongs right now. Not sometime in the future, not sometime in the XYZ trends. Right now a believer has been called to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Right now a believer has been given to go for look the divine nature. And how many days more you want to compromise, dear brother? Compromise in each and everything. Compromise in each and every word. Compromise in each and every thought of the word. The only thing what we can look here, people not having proper knowledge of the subject enter into the pulpit. And people who think do not do differentiate between the essence of God, the divine partaking nature of Christ. And who want to look into the realm of those words which their stupid mind can think and compromise is been number one in today's apostasy. When jo Hebrews 13.8 tells to the point of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday and tomorrow forever. They want to quote it. He has been performing the miracles and healings. Again, he'll be performing even tomorrow the same me healings and miracles. But they do not know that it has been used to the essence of God. He is both immutable and veracity. He is the one who is not going to change in his character, in his essence. But the various manifestations of his work, rising early the prophets, Later on, he himself being manifested. Later on, he has sent apostles. And now he has been nutshelled into one copy known as Bible. Taken over 1,500 years to travel it out. And the time that has been laid upon believers' life, hardly 30 or 40 years on this earth after his salvation, so that he could be serious enough to learn the word of the Lord. Even in that time, he wants to enjoy the time thinking about the false doctrines. Emotionally, gibberishly jumping around for the realm of miracles, healings, or tongues and never coming to the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then how can he come to take the divine partaking ministry so that he could be renewed into the true righteousness and aleity of the truth? It's a really pathetic condition for us to know, dear brother, each and every day. The trends that have been compromised in the church age, the trends that have been taken out from the church age, and being replaced with the cheap substitutes like the Parmenian or Parmenas, rather than given this great wealth of Alexandria, rather than using it, the ancient saying stands firm in the pulpits today. They still want to compromise with the cheap substitutes. They still want to look upon those stupidified thoughts of that pre-canon period or pre-canon period of the church age that they are absolutely interested to worry about the pre-canon period. And never they are looking upon the completed canon of the scripture. Never in the epistles of Apostle Paul writes about once again mentioning of the gifts. But rather he tells them the body of Christ which have to be built, it has to be built upon the pastor teacher work. And added upon by the evangelical work. A day by day process. 
but this has been neglected today. The pure work of the pastor teacher has been absolutely compromised today. And by it is so, because they are not interested to be having all conversation in a holy manner. They are not interested to stay holy enough into the honesty of Bible doctrine. That's why. The great pain what we are going to enjoy in a day-by-day -day process, dear brethren, it's a very great pain that we are going through. It's a pain on our part that Christendom has been absolutely nullifying the word of the Lord. A great pain on that part which will be counted for them at the judgment seat of Christ when they appear. For the fakery of these things, for the negligence of the things. For the arrogance attitude not to come to know and realize the word of the Lord as number one priority in the pulpit. Ezekiel was not ignorant to open wide his mouth. And he was been eating, then Lord God, the Holy Spirit, was feeding him the word. But today, what is happening today, dear brethren? Who are the men? What are the men? Where is the opening wide of their mouth? They are opening wide their kidneys. Do you know why? They want to pump up the adrenaline and they want to fill it with the emotion. Constantly begging, weeping. And thinking that I will be whether qualified for the gift or the rewards, like Parmandis, a fifth century Greek philosopher. But Lord has qualified you to give like the gift of an Alexandria, the great munificent reward of all time. What a great reward it is for us in a day-to-day -day life that we have to go through, dear brethren. Taking upon, feeding upon. The simple word, the simple truth, the simple reality. But what are we doing apart from this? We are still begging upon whether we will be qualified for Parmandu's gift or not. Still pleading upon ignorance. Still thinking upon to tell that Lord is still the same. That he has not completed the canon. The Lord has completed the full panoramic view of the human history as well. And you, where are you, sandwiched between the two advanced, what is your importance and what you need to do, that you have to take care of that. Greater the failure for you to know these things, greater will be the failure for you to understand the truth of the reality of this great uniqueness of the church age. It is a great privilege on our part that Lord has bestowed upon us this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher in communicating the truth. And apart from communicating the truth, there is no work for a pastor teacher wherewith he can compromise and he can say that I have been given this gift and I have been using in XYZ trends for marrying, burying, causing for personal visiting, counseling, emotional based worship services. No. The duty of the pastor teacher is to teach, 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 thoroughly being prepared, faithfully being prepared, to study and to teach. And there is no other way, there is no other trend, there is no other procedure. If we can ask for a professional, if he's qualified into some of the things, what is his work? If he's a plumber, he's a plumber. If he's a mechanic, he's a mechanic. A plumber cannot do the work of a mechanic, a mechanic cannot do the work of a plumber. Likewise, the duty of the pastor teacher is not to involve in XYZ trends of emotional based worship services or crusader arrogance. But his work is to inculcate the divine nature so that we shall be like him when we shall appear. The Lord has made us thoroughly qualified in the position of sanctification without spot and without blame. Experientially, we need to grow up. Greater our failure to grow up to that experiential sanctification, greater our failure in life, into day to day walk, into the ministry of life, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren. The great pain on our part is, we know very well you are going to be getting out, not having proper score blessings in time as well as in eternity. But at least properly try to honor the word by having a right and true fellowship with Jehovah, by desiring to have a right and true fellowship with Jehovah with a sincere heart and a pure mind. That's why Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter was very clear to tell, grind up the lions of your mind, be sober, be diligent. Do not be once again foolish into the ignorance of your lust patterns. When you will grind up your lions, dear brethren, you are not answerable to me, you are answerable to Jehovah when he appears. When you go back 
or whichever the rapture could happen or whichever the procedure Lord seems fit to take you back home. You should not be ashamed. The pilgrimage trip what we are going through is of a temporary one. The greater life that we have to enjoy is of a great value. And that is what the polytheum of privileges of all time. And this great polytheum of privileges, if it has been ignored, if it has been neglected, if it has not been made number one priority, that means you are meant to say that you do not know that you belong to heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven. The holy conduct, the holy walk, it has to absolutely align. And to align with the mental ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, it has to be rebounded. So that Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, can in return cause you to look what has to be your partaking divine nature in the heaven. And how you need to jive with the blueprint. And greater the failure for us not to be jived with the blueprint, greater the responsibility once again to be reminded upon our lives that we are neglecting Bible doctrine that we are neglecting the true worthiness of our life on this earth. Many men might come and go, we don't care. But when you have come here on this earth, what are you doing? That is what it really counts. And if you are not counting to the praise of His glory and His grace, then Lord should help you at the judgment seat of Christ. The uniqueness of the church age, the polity of privileges given to us in this church age, demand that we make up number one priority for Bible doctrine. Demand that we take up to the, to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as number one priority. And greater the failure to know these things, greater will be the failure in your life. So, dear brethren, we shall continue in the next tip. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be to Lord God, the Father, that we believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is very simple in the privacy of your soul when you take the decision. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas we do have one more thing, for our believers, the great man is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Greater the doctrine that you take, greater will be the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in your life to be exactly evaluated. Because we need to take the divine partaking nature. And we do have one more thing. For the pastor teaches the great man is to preach the word, Kerusothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season. So that we can stand for the diameter of my witnesses, the great diameter of my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The indwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And above all, we do have the indwelling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control us and to tell that each and every man who will be your witnesses to the doctrine, they have to be the one to control you. And they will be your witnesses. And if there are no witnesses, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But it is our work to stay on, to look on, to be on. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge sovereign, Lord. For we ask in Christ's name, Father. Thank you. Amen. Lord, we worship.